はようございます。Uh, my name is Muk O, and I'm here to talk about Mercari Engine. So, what is an engine? Engine is a device that goes forward given fuel. So, I'm going to talk about three types of fuel that power、uh, Mercari Engine. So, first is Discovery and Exchange Engine. Next is Data and Machine Learning Engine. The F that you see is a function of machine learning. And third is People and Culture Engine. So, from the core, which is our discovery and exchange engine, we, in order for us to grow and scale, we need to automate. And then from the data and machine learning, we further need to innovate and scale by having people and the right culture. So, let's get through it and talk about discovery and exchange engine. So, first, there's Mercari, and let's talk about the, actually the buyer's journey. So, there's a buyer, and the buyer wants something and discovers Mercari. And、of course, shops, buys, and gets. And this is the typical journey for the buyer. But one thing that's special about Mercari is that we also have a seller's journey. So here's a seller, and she owns lots of things and she, that, she, that she keeps at home. Of course, she discovers Mercari and she knows that she can sell it there. So there's a list, you sell, and you ship. So that's the seller's journey. Now, if you look at the seller and the buyer, there's a, a lot of parallel between the two. So, seller owning and wanting, discovering Mercari, listing and shopping, that actually is the discovery. That's one of the core things that we do. Next is the listing, shopping, selling, buying, and shipping and getting. That's the exchange. And this is our Mercari, and,、uh, Mercari Discovery and Exchange Engine. This is our magic right here, where we have sellers, buyers, and items all around. So, from here, let's talk a bit more about data and machine learning, because from that core, we actually gather a lot of data. So, let's talk about data. This is a GMV, which is a gross merchandise volume that's in the US、uh, from 2017 and 2018. And you can see The seasonality and the time, and then it goes up and down. You see a lot of the cities lighting up. And you can see one of the, one of the、uh, now it's a projection, which is going to the future. And、uh, you can see Houston right there is kind of spiking up, which is Houston, Texas. So, what we can do next is take a look at transactions that's happening in Houston. So, the blues are the ones that are shipping out, and the reds are the shipping in. And you can see People shipping it to all the way to Hawaii. And from all these major cities, the shipments are coming in. That's a lot of data and a lot of transactions that are happening. And this is just one quarter. Okay. So if we look at the sort of the smaller details of our data, you can think about it as the following we have the seller data, we have the item data. And we have the buyer data. And it's the behavior that links all three of them. And that really is the core of our database. But we don't stop there. We actually go further out and understand what other databases are out there. And all, imagine a database that has all the items in the world. And that's what we're going for. So when someone lists an item on Mercari, we can use machine learning to find and、uh, match it in the item database, which has about 100 million different unique SKUs. From there, we fetch it back, structure the data, and bring it back to Mercari. And we don't even stop there. We want all the sellers as well as, well as all the buyers. And that's how we make the data work here. So, data is not enough. You have to have machine learning on top of that. So, this function ML, which is the machine learning, data is the input, and the output comes the magic as well. So, you, there's a lot of things that we can do. I'm not going to talk about all of these things, I'm just going to talk about a few. So, we talked about data. Let's talk about machine learning. So, one thing that I want to talk about is genome、uh, engine, which really is simple as this. So, we have a function that has an input and an output. And what if the input was an item on Mercari? And what can we do to that? Well, from all these data that we have that's human readable, human legible, we can convert that into machine legible, n dimensional vector. So, from there, which we call it a genome, is a special string of numbers that could be a thousand different dimensions that describe the item. 
So what can we do, actually? I'll talk a bit more about that now. So if we ranked, or not ranked, but if we just staggered all the list of things that are on Mercari, this is what you'll see, all the genomes there. And actually, we have about 100 dimensions, 100 numbers that describe that shirt. What we can do then is cluster them and have, you can see the patterns emerging. And you can see that there's a shirt, now it's over there, but things that are nearby are other shirts. Now things like a dress is a little further away and pants, that's a little further away. And actually the clustering is not just flat, but it's also hierarchical and it's actually cluster similar items. So, we had 100 different dimensions, but we reduced it down to three dimensions. And let's take a look at actual data here. So we have laptops, smartwatches. By the way, this is all automatically generated. iPhones, clothes, and Nikes. One thing that's interesting is that iPhones, from the main branch, it didn't go into more of the laptops or smartwatches, but it went into more of brand and clothing, which is really interesting. It's actually kind of true. And there's our shirt. So what can we do here? Well, we have a function called similarity. So we can say, how similar is this t-shirt from the shoes? And we can say, oh, the similarity is about 0.78. And it's very similar. Whereas if we compare an item called a uh, shirt and a laptop, of course, the similarity is going to be a little bit different. So you might ask, so what? Well, we can do something like this. If you like the shirt, you might also want to buy these shoes. So these are the types of automation and scalability that we can create with data and machine learning. So we don't stop there. We, have, we can create genomes for buyers, and we can create genomes for sellers as well. So what that means is if we have someone we like, let's say she's the best seller on Mercari, we can ask the machine, get me people who look like her. And from there, we can say, well, she sold these items, maybe these other sellers can sell these items as well. So there's tons we can do. So let's take a look at another data point here. So here, every dot you see is a buyer. And what we did was from the thousand dimensional genome, we brought it down to two dimensions. So you see the two dimensions, and we squish it down and then mapped it into a two dimensional uh, mapping. So if you zoom in, so the green that you see is uh, buyers buying Nike. And if we look at this sort of the male female, there's like, okay, Nike is bought by male as well as female. Um, if we go down here and look at sort of pink, Lularo, which is female fashion, Funko, which is a, a collectible toy, and Nintendo, you can see that the mo Nintendo and Funko are mostly male. And then you see the female fashion over there is mostly pink, which makes a lot of sense. So this clustering really works, and you can find nearby people who are very similar to you. So if you do further analysis, um, we can have lots more information coming out of it. And that's what data science does, is as when machine does some computation and spits out some information, we still need sometimes the humans to go in and dig in and look inside and do some analysis. So in this case for fem female buyers, top categories are of course accessories and fashion, but high growth categories are technology and mom buyer. And these are, what can we do with this information? We can do a lot. Uh, for male buyers, uh, it's kind of obvious, there's technology, and, but high growth market is collectibles and home. So very interesting insights that are coming out of data science as well. So we talked about genome, let's talk about predictions. So predictions are about if you ask a question, some oracle will tell you the answer. So if we have the shirt, maybe the question is, will this thing sell within 72 hours? So what's the probability of this selling in 72 hours? And that's what we call a sellability score. So this is actually interesting data here. Um, let me try to describe it. So every dot of line is a day's worth of all the things that are listed. And um, we basically, everything that's listed, we've actually computed and said, how sellable is this? And we mapped it from zero to one. So, and when we map it to actuals, you can see that things actually are sold and we predict that will we'll sell are all in the top and things that we thought we're not gonna sell are all at the bottom. So what can we do with this? We can say, hey, 
as a user is listing something, we can say, hey, your sellability score is low. Maybe you can put more pictures in or better descriptions. Or if the sellability is really, really high, then we can also boost it up in our search. So there's a lot of responses that we can do with this data. Let's take another question here. So what's the probability of the seller canceling? So if I have a user, uh, a seller, I listed an item, somebody bought it, but then I cancel it. There are a few instances that happen, so we wanted to predict like, can we predict people actually canceling? And it's really interesting here, too. This is actually very good. Um, so all the dots are things that were sold. And we've also probably uh, made uh, predictions of each of these items. And you can see there's a bunch on top that we think we're going to get canceled. And it turns out when we actually map it to the actuals, so all the stuff in the top were actually canceled. So we can predict ahead if somebody's actually listing something and then saying that uh, there's a high probability of cancellation, then we may not want to surface those up, especially to new users, because new buyers, they might have a poor experience. So there's a lot we can do here. So it's not just about those two, but there's a bunch of questions. Is this item a counterfeit? Um, uh, Lucas is working on this. Uh, will this person churn? Uh, is, will this person come back? Uh, will this owner list, uh, own this item? This is actually interesting. So if I'm a seller, we can predict what kind of other items that you might have that you should sell. And of course, this is really the personalization. If I am selling something, what's the probability that this person will buy it? And through that computation, we can personalize a lot of things. So in order to do all this magic, we need the data but we also need the machine learning as well. So we talked about data and machine learning. Let's talk about people and culture. So people and culture, of course, you know, it's the, the I feel that it's the most important thing in a company. Um, for at least for US, we have offices in the US at Tokyo, Portland, we're headquartered in Palo Alto, and we just started an office in Boston with one person. Uh, that's how you get started. And we have a wonderful team, wonderful, wonderful team where people are very passionate about our product. And we also have a technology advisory board which started um, at MIT. So these are professors there. Uh, Fredo is in computational photography. And Wojtek does machine learning and computer vision. So wonderful people there as well in Boston. And finally, of course, um, how we organize ourselves in terms of the team is that we have Scrum themes which really is the flow of user's journey. So the seller and the buyer's journey go from growth, search, conversion, completion, support, and foundation, from which then we have cross-functional teams on all these platforms. So as I talked a lot about machine learning. I talked a lot about data. But without everybody else in this teams, we can't do anything. So it's a team effort uh, in order to create any of these magic. So we talked about people and culture engine. And in order to innovate, we need that. And of course, from data and automation, finally go back to discovery and exchange engine. That's the core of what we do. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have uh, Sogawa-san from Murpei.